Buenos dias y bienvenidos. Good morning and welcome once again to Tiempo. I'm Joe Torres. This morning we will tell you about a music education program that's partnering with New York City schools to help Latino students improve their language skills, confidence, concentration, and so much more. There it is. We'll tell you a little bit more about the people behind the program that believe school kids involved in the arts earn higher grades. In fact, more than 30,000 kids have benefited from the program. We'll have more on this coming up in just a few minutes. The Education Through Music program has been partnering with New York City Public Schools to help Latino students, and all students really, improve their language skills, confidence, and concentration, as well as so much more. You'll see in a second. The program has been around for about 30 years and provides music education to schools that don't really have the resources to teach children the arts. And it has already benefited thousands of kids. The people behind it believe school kids involved in the arts earn higher grades. They don't just believe it, they know it. Joining us this morning to tell us all about it, Jennifer Swift and Ulysses Solano, both from the Education Through Music program. Thank you both for being here. I, if you watch Tiempo and, and the folks at home, they know my passion for education because it's, it's, it's the ticket to success, whether you're a Latino student or, or any student whatsoever. But when I learned about it, and we'll get to that in a second, about music through education, can you, Jen, make the correlation for me, particularly when it comes to Latino students, why music helps them succeed, either as English language learners or in what capacity they might be in. Absolutely, and again, thank you so much for having oh, us. My pleasure. We're so excited to talk about this. Um, so, with education through music, 52% of all of the students that we have are Latino. Okay. Um, and one of the things that we try and do is educate all students. So we want every single kid to get a music education, but we realize that there are certain challenges with kids who are coming from different communities. So we, the reason why music is so important is because we really believe that students who get music education go to school, they stay in school. Um, it works both parts of their brain. They do better in math. They do better in English. Um, and they, they form this really good sense of community with everyone in their school. Mm -hmm. Kids who might not speak the same language can both play on a drum together. They can all learn music at the same time. Um, and that's why we think it's one of those core subjects that can really help everyone. Before I get to Ulysses, make the leap for me and the connection clearer. Yes, you've seen the results of kids doing better since you've instituted the program. What is happening that allows music to be the catalyst and the difference between higher grades to, that results in higher grades. Absolutely. So think of um, when students are talking about operas. A lot of our students go over they're learning plot, they're learning characters, they're learning summaries. They are learning English while mm -hmm. they're learning music. While they are doing math, they are learning patterns, they are learning different rhythms. So all of these things correlate, they all translate back to the things that they're doing in their other classes. Okay, let me ask the teacher and the mentor, because you're in the classroom. That's right. And, and, and what is it that you see when music is introduced that suddenly things flourish? Well, I mean, there are several things that happen in there. Music is so multidimensional, you know, it's not, it's not just something that we hear, yes. but it's something that happens at many levels, you know, there is the... There is a spatial level, there is the, the timbre, you know, the different instruments. Yes. There is the way we compose music, music through time. So all that needs to be counted, all that needs to be described, all that needs language. Mm -hmm. And this is where I believe the, so much of the learning happens because the, the children need to be able to describe things that are really, really hard to describe with normal language. Okay. So for example, para nosotros Latinos, sí. you know, for us, when we're learning a second language, especially, it's not this language we speak at home. Yes. We're, we're getting exposed to a lot of terminology that is not necessarily available in our daily conversations. Of course. We're talking about very specific words, very specific, you know. Um, and what does music do that allows you in, to absorb those words in music, better? Not only that, it's also the part of the, of the feeling, because music gives you also that feeling. So while you're learning something that is intellectual, it's also triggering the part that is the creative part. Yes. And it hits you from the heart, like okay. right, right. To I the can heart. see that. Jump in. And on that note, like when we look at students with vocabulary, um, like Ulysses was saying, their vocabulary expands exponentially because they are learning so many more words, but they're also learning different ways to remember words. They're memorizing words as yes. part of songs and things like that. Um, yes. So that also helps. Uh, uh, it, I mean, the evidence is pretty clear that different students learn in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think music would be a great way, it sounds like, based on what you've seen and what you've mm -hmm. experienced, mm -hmm. is a one way of connecting to kids that perhaps in a traditional more format doesn't sink in and doesn't penetrate as well. Have I oversimplified it? No, it's correct. And, but there's a lot more to it, of yes, course. Yes, of you course. Know, yeah. we, for example, the teachers, we have to get them to also um, identify with the communities. And we serve them, you know, with um, repertoire, for example, mm -hmm. that is that 
serves those communities. The parents, when they go to see the concerts, they get to hear songs in their native tongue, and they get to hear it also in English. So that we have a lot of this back and forth. Right yes. Now. So I, I, I would assume you've already, in, in, in a very unique way, roped in the family to get involved and to see what's happening in their schools and, and take a little pride in ownership. In One it. of the so. things that we do at Education Through Music, if you allow me, is that um, we really work with all aspects of our, of our community. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are educating the children. We are empowering the teachers through uh, professional development. Yes. We are also giving professional development to the, to the administrators so they understand what music does. I want to ask you more about mm -hmm. that when we come mm -hmm. back because that's a very interesting mm -hmm. point because you're educating not just the students, but you're educating the teachers, the educators themselves. So sit tight, more on the Education Through Music program and why it works so well when we come back. Welcome back to Tiempo, the Education Through Music program, partnering with New York City Public Schools to help Latino kids and all kids improve their language skills, confidence, concentration, and so much more. Joining us this morning to tell us about it, Jennifer Swift and Ulysses Solano, both from the Education Through Music program. I don't know how many years you've been involved with it, Jen. You've seen the numbers. You've seen the evidence. I mean, can you can you quantifiably point to saying, since we introduced music, here's what's happened? Absolutely. Our first ever success program, I would say, when we first started ETM, it was started in one school. That school went. That school was going to be closed. It went on to win a national blue ribbon <laughs> from the Department of Education. Yes. Um, that's just one school. Mm -hmm. um, we see holistically, um, we have an entire evaluation department that looks at how much better students do when they have music, how much longer students stay in school. Um, and you can just see anecdotally, students stay after because they're taking band, they're taking orchestra, kids that weren't showing up before. Mm -hmm. um, we see all of those things improve tremendously every time we introduce a program. Ulysses, I love what you said before, that part of this process means educating the educators, the teachers who do the teaching. Who does that and what qualifies them to be the leaders in that regard? We have a person in our department, her name is Meryl Collins. She's absolutely fantastic and um, also um, we have um, uh, all, all of our team, yeah. we're, all, we're always in, in constant um, professional development. We're, we're going to, to many different places okay. to get more knowledge about what we have to do. So that you school. can pass it on to the exactly. kids. Exactly. As, 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 automatically, as we receive something, we always give it away. Mm -hmm. Give me an example of, of something either that you did or another teacher musically that led to results that you could point to and say, wow, since I started that, things have really taken off. Well, for example, when I was a teacher, you yeah. know, one of the things, one of my favorite subjects was Beethoven, because I, I love Beethoven. Yes. I love Beethoven music. And I wanted my kids in the Bronx to love Beethoven too. Yes. And so one of the things that I did was, um, you know, introduce them to the music through uh, perhaps, you know, pop artists. Yeah. And there have been so many pop artists that have used, for example, Moonlight Sonata. Yes. And kids, they knew this music. They yeah. knew it. They just did not know who wrote it originally. Yes. And, and they clicked right away. So a modern day artist will sample, mm -hmm. right? They'll take a little sample a of little Beethoven sample. Mm -hmm. and put it in their tune. Exactly. And then you use that as a hook. Yes. To introduce them to the heavier stuff. But can that be used also as a hook to introduce them to math, I science, uh, you name it, well, architecture? Go ahead. If you allow me, you know, when you're studying the classics, you're studying history. Like, you cannot there avoid you to study history. It's like an automatic hook for that. Mm -hmm. You have to do it. Yes. I know that you're always looking for teachers to, to teach. Um, is that continue? That's an ongoing effort? Absolutely. Um, and Ulysses can, was a teacher, but we are always looking for teachers who have an interest in music, who, um, can, who are coming from different communities in New York City, who can be role models for all the different students that we have. Mm -hmm. um, that would be amazing. Yeah, no, we serve many schools um, where a great percentage of the populations are Latinos, uh -huh. and, and we are constantly needing uh, Latino teachers that can speak both Spanish and, and English. But do they need to be Latino teachers who have a background or an education in music? Yes, yes. they do. Yeah. They do. They, they need to be at least on the pathway to certification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've got about 30 seconds left. If we've teased some people who might be interested, where can they go for, for more information or who do they reach out sure, to? Sure, sure. So they, um, we have a lot of information on our website, etmonline.org. On our Facebook, we have videos of all the different performances. So if you want to see this in action, mm -hmm. um, if you want to see the concerts, go on our Facebook, go on our website. And if you want to see kids really learn and take off. Absolutely. And if you want to see it. parents dancing along, you'll see that uh, too. Uh, who doesn't want to <laughs> see that? So a pleasure. Thank you guys. And thank Thank you for doing what you're doing for, for Latino kids and all kids. And thank yeah, you for having us.